Hey, what's up, guys? So, uh, the other day I filmed a walking video not too far from here. It was on Islington. I think that was the last time I made a walking video. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was. I think it was last weekend. But anyhow, I believe we're in the Stonegate, Queensway Stonegate neighborhood, and this is where Evans Avenue starts. So we're going to be walking here along Evans. Temperature is around 26 degrees centigrade. So we all know what's very likely to happen tomorrow, June 7th. It turns out that ATU declares that if an ag a tentative agreement hasn't been reached, whoa, look at that flying box there. If a tentative agreement hasn't been reached by, let's say, 2 a.m., then TTC is going to go on strike. And today, on my way here, I heard the um, a, a temporary announcement. So basically, what I'm saying is. The Vision system added a brand new announcement saying something along the lines of uh, due to labor disruption, there may be no service as of 3 a.m. Something like that. And I saw that on, on social media. Somebody posted on social media about that, about that particular announcement. And yes, it happened uh, with me as well. Whoa, it's a little windy out. So you see, uh, Toronto Transit Commission and ATU 113 has been cooperating with one another. And the, yeah, the ATU says that the transit workers can walk off the job as of tomorrow. So just blame ATU for that. And the last time there's been a strike was 2008. April 2008, which was 16 years ago. And I posted a video on my community post about... Um, it was about um, the, how people's reactions from 16 years ago. And the video was published in 2008 and I even commented on that video saying oh I bet a lot of people are watching this in 2024 well I posted that I shared that video on my community post just to see that th just to show you guys that this is exactly going to be the reaction of uh, people tomorrow because the same thing that happened then is happening tomorrow there's a 95% chance of that so it's unfortunate, but one guy said in that uh, news clip, it was on CP24, he said, oh, uh, so there's no service. What am I gonna do? Walk home? I live in Scarborough. Oh, I'm just gonna walk home? Well, he didn't think of calling an Uber or a taxi. I mean, sir, you could have just called an Uber or a taxi. I don't know if Uber existed back then, but you definitely could have called a taxi cab and they'll drive you all the way back to Scarborough. But I, I see how these people feel. I mean, they're gonna feel stranded, like especially those who work night shifts and who don't drive. Now you see, I don't drive, but I have to go to college tomorrow and it's gonna be a real bummer for me, so, but it won't affect me too much because my parents are gonna drive me there. But it's gonna really take a toll on everybody's reputation because people work graveyard shifts and they have to get home and yet there's no bus, no subway, they're stranded. I mean, I feel sorry for these people who are living alone. Ooh, nice car there. Yeah, these people would be living on their own um, they don't have a driver's license, they don't drive, no car, so they rely on TTC, and 
they somebody maybe living in Etobicoke who has to work a graveyard shift in Scarborough and they have no car there's nothing to take them home no TTC bus all buses subways and streetcars are going to be completely halted so it's uh, it's going to leave people feeling stranded but guys if you're in a situation like this just call a taxi or an Uber They'll pick you up, they'll take you home. I mean, it's not gonna affect um, Uber or or taxi, well, or Lyft. But um, you see, the strike here affects people who work, who go to school, who, um, um, yeah, these are people who don't drive. So, you know, they work, they go to school and yeah, whatever. And those who work graveyard shifts. But thanks to the ATU 113, our life is... We're going to be screwed up. Trust me, guys, it will not be permanent. This is only a temporary thing. But I am feeling a little disappointed because it sounds a bit of a crisis, like a crisis. I don't remember that last event that happened because I was three years old last time. And that memory would probably have no significance to me anyways. I wasn't interested in transit back then. So I wouldn't care about that kind of stuff. But like, if you watch that video that I posted on my community post, everybody's gonna be, feel the same way tomorrow. That scenario, that exact same scenario is gonna happen tomorrow. Yeah, especially at night because things get dangerous and it's dark out. So you feel even more stranded at night than you would during the day. However, on the bright side, Go Transit won't be affected by the strike. It's strictly TTC and only that. So no, Go Transit will still run on a normal schedule, which means Go Trains and Go Buses will still run like usual. So that uh, that's uh, one light at the end of the tunnel. If Go Transit didn't have was part of the strike as well then we'd be really screwed up. But the thing is though, I do live near a GO train line, but I do not near live near a GO station. It's gonna affect, uh, there's gonna be people who are getting to the airport that are gonna be affected because a lot of people uh, take public transit, including the 900 Airport Express bus to get to the airport, so they're gonna have a hard time, but of course you still got my way and go bus that uh, gets to the airport. But hey, there's a solution to every problem. Maybe not literally, but uh, most problems there's a solution to. Now we're at Islington Avenue, coming up. That's where I filmed my walking video just the other day. You see, the thing is, Toronto Transit Commission gets 2.5 million riders a day or a week. I think it was, I think it's 2.5 million a day, I'm not too sure. But Go Transit only gets 200,000. So think of it this way. TTC gets a lot, a lot more riders than Go Transit does. Makes sense because Toronto Transit Commission runs everywhere, but Go Transit only runs towards certain places. Speaking of TTC, there goes the NG Diesel on bus, on bus route number 110 Islington South. Three. 
I think I know what I'm going to title this video. Talking about the strike tomorrow. What happened is that the ATU-113 has won like a battle, of, a court battle over whether or not transit workers get to walk off the job. And yeah, they've reached agreement, but they haven't reached the tentative agreement yet. It is a little emotional for people who don't drive and for transit enthusiasts as well. But tomorrow will be another day in history. And unfortunately, things like this can't happen again. What, what, do they, they, uh, looks like they revamped that Starbucks location. I kid you not, it did not used to look like this before. Queens Corp. I think this looks like, it says for lease. So it might be some office building or something like that. But like, look at this, the Starbucks location. It did not look like this before. It did not, okay? I've been in that location before, before this building was built. And I'm surprised that they built it that quickly because I remember that Starbucks location looking the way it used to not so long ago. I mean, if you go back to a year ago, it was just a standalone store. I, th I mean, technically it still is a standalone store, but it was basically there isolated by itself. And now you come back, what? You're like, boom, what happened here? But hey, at least it looks more modern because the previous development was old school, but I'm surprised that they built that building so fast in a, in a jiffy. You'd think that building something would take maybe a couple of years, but no, it, they do it that quickly. Although it's only a third, a three, a two or three story building, it, three story. It's like a three story building. So I suppose three story buildings can, um, can be built in a jiffy. There's a helicopter in the sky. I wonder if that's Chopper 24. One time I saw a Chopper 24 from the CN Tower. I was looking through my telescope and there it was. This neighborhood here is quite industrial. And here comes that truck making a big humming noise. My mom and I used to drive along this stretch all the time. We'll be passing the Queensway Division garage pretty soon. So this neighborhood here is a mix of industry and commercial activity. There's the Cineplex just north of the QEW. I've been to that Cineplex many, many, many times. I think the last time I've been there was 2020 on my birthday. But I haven't been there since. I'm not really a movie person, but sometimes I'd go to the movie theaters growing up. The first time I've, when I went to that Cineplex location, the first time I've been to any movie theater was back in 2009. I was celebrating one of my classmates' birthday, 
they have a party room there and I watched the movie Up. Yep, that's the title, Up. And it's a Pixar movie about an old man that lives at a house that flies. I mean, it was, it was just a regular house at the very beginning, but then later on, the, the balloons came out and then up, up they go. Then they land in a lost world. My parents are really fond of that movie. Me, not so much. I find it a little depressing, not to spoil you guys. It kind of has a bit of depressing vibes. Okay, I guess that is kind of a spoiler alert. Here comes Horner. Corner Avenue. Hmm, I wonder if there's a fire happening behind that fence. Oh no, it looks like a garden. Well, I don't recommend using a fire hydrant to water your plants because the pressure in the fire hydrant is very, very strong. Your plants don't need that much pressure. That's why you have to be very careful when it comes to fire hoses. Here comes another chopper. What's with all those helicopters everywhere? Perfect timing. Don't even have to wait for the light. self-storage facility, part of the uh, commercial business, the commercial activity. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's not part of commercial activity, because it's just for a place where people get to store their stuff that may not fit in their house, or they may only use seasonably. I'm just rambling on just looking for something to talk about. Wow, that building there looks really industrial. So really here you got offices and some industrial places. Oh, it's called Sherwood Industrial Mall. I see. Wow, it's kind of breezy out. I feel like I have to hold on to three things at once, as impossible as it is, because I have to hold on to my pants pocket because that's where I'm storing my Presto card. And a couple of times I stored my Presto card in my pocket and it flew out. And then when it comes to taking the bus or the GO train, I look for it and I'm like, I could swear I just had it. Where did my Presto card go? I don't understand. I could swear I had it with me in my pocket. 
but obviously it's the stupid wind that blows things out of the pockets. Unfortunately, uh, pocket, well, coat pockets are, unless they have a zipper, they're not secure. But I can't really, can't really do that because I don't want to take chances. Although my hat's pretty secure. Delta Bingo and Gaming. I hear a lot about it on the radio and on TV, I think. But that will be the future home. They're almost done building. It's a very nice looking office building. That's kind of my favorite style of offices. I would like to work in an office building that has a design like this one right here. Printing house. So I guess that's where they... I wonder if that's a company that makes printers, but that doesn't sound realistic. Never even heard of ATPH before. There's the Tim Hortons I used to go to all the time. I, well, not all the time, but uh, I would say many times. That's the Tim Hortons that I went to. I know there's one somewhere along here that I've been to many times, and it's not far from the Toronto Self Detention Center. Maybe it is the maybe this is the one. Nah, it's probably further down. It's very hard for me to tell, to be honest. My mistake. That's the Starbucks location I went into that one time. That's the location I was talking about earlier. Okay, thank you, lady. Thanks for letting me pass. I was wrong. Sorry, guys. That Starbucks location has not gone anywhere. It hasn't been revamped. It's just as it was before. But it's just that Islington and K Kipling... It looks so identical. You know, I don't really come to this neck of the woods that often anymore. So it's very easy for me to forget things, especially if it's so identical. You got, oh, I can hear Circles by Post Malone. I used to hear that a lot in the fall of 2019. But I still think that building that I saw right on the right on the corner of Islington and Evans did not used to be there and is and is new. Because I still don't remember it being there. And I mean Islington, Kipling, and Evans, not Islington and Queensway. My bad. I don't know what I'm saying. But you see, Evans Avenue, when it comes to Islington and Kipling... It just looks so alike. Hey, look at that. There's the event support bus. The Orion 7 OG diesel. That would be one of the 7900 series. But uh, they started off with the lower 7900 series, like 7903 or whatever. Mind you, a lot of the um, 
the lower 7900s got retired first. But some got changed into event, the event bus. Now, when we say that the seven, all 7900s are retired, well, not literally, because this is a 2006 or even, there's like one or two of the 7900s that came out in 2005. So, not all 7900s are retired, the 2006 OG diesels. It's just that they're either retired or decommissioned, because one of them is used as a Toronto Island bus. But you can't ride 7900s, any of the 2006 Orion 7 OG diesel series on regular routes anymore. That ended, I think, in February. It was either February or March of this year. That's why we've got the 2010 to 11 NG diesels in Queensway Division to replace those buses. This dealership looks brand new, and there's Queensway Division Garage. So we've got a couple of event support, support buses there. There's the old school TTC logo. Unfortunately, it's private property, so we can't go anywhere past the sidewalk. But you can see there's an NG diesel sitting there in its shed. And you've got the Nova LFS bus. tracks that are never used. I mean, maybe they use it for uh, freight train services, but I've never seen a train running along this rail. But hey, now that we're past the tracks, we are now in the Alderwood neighborhood. Well, we're right, I mean, we're right on the border of Alderwood, because anywhere south of Evans, bordered by these tracks here to the west, and I think it's somewhere to the east, I don't remember, but past Sherway Gardens to the east is Alderwood. Okay, I'm not waiting. Sorry, guys, but I'm not patient enough. Those cars are just going to keep building up. I can't stand here all evening. Okay, so that's gonna be it. Wow, those, those two dealerships are space-aged. There's the BMW and Mac. This sort of reminds me of the McNichol Division garage somehow. But anyhow, that'll uh, be it. I think I'm gonna wrap it up now. So if you like this video, please, uh, yeah, please subscribe and drop a like. Stay tuned for more transit, nature, and walking videos coming your way. I'll try to expand my grounds and post videos more frequently like I used to, but I do the best I can. Oh, they're, they're building something. Looks like they're building something here. Although I see cars in there. 
anyhow, uh, that'll be it. Take care and bye-bye.